In our previous video, we addressed the pre-shading of the aircraft. Now let's talk about the actual color the aircraft is going to be. In this case, uh, we're going to work with the top surfaces of the aircraft, which are all going to be one color. It's going to be a, a drab brown color. We also want to talk about technique regarding this and how to utilize the pre-shading that you've already accomplished. So there are two techniques that I'd like to demonstrate. The first one's going to be a general coverage technique in which I'm going to approach the model on a very shallow level, working with sweeping motions and trying not to apply too much paint in any one area. The second technique, which I'll do on the left side of the aircraft, is what I call panel by panel. And in that, it's a little bit more advanced, a little bit more technical, but you have a little bit more control over how much contrast you want with the pre-shade showing through. You may want it generally pretty even over the course of the model, but there may be certain areas per the actual aircraft that you may want a little more contrast or a little less, and you'll be able to have more control with that technique. So let's go ahead and get started. And once again, I'm going to start off with the right side of the aircraft. I've already loaded the airbrush, airbrush with the appropriate color. And as I said, you just want to come in very general. If necessary, you can move in a little bit closer for a little bit stronger paint flow in a particular area. Or draw back a little bit to get more general coverage. And you can just work your way all the way around the surfaces of the aircraft. You'll notice that the pre-shade will generally start to fade, but the idea is for some of it to show through, a very small percentage of it. As you work, you want to continue to maintain movement of the airbrush and not stop in any one place for any length of time. You can minimize your movements when you want to address a specific area, but you pretty much want to still keep movement. If you like moving side to side or on the vertical, either way works fine because it's not nearly as technically oriented. Okay, so I've completed the first technique, which again is the shallow. So now, demonstrating the second technique on the left side of the aircraft, my angle is going to change drastically. Similar to when I did the panel lining, I'm going to come in at a more extreme angle, but instead of addressing the panel line, I'm going to work on the panel. Now I'm going to start right here along the wing and then work into the inner surfaces. As I work the panel, again, I'm mindful of the pre-shade so I don't overfill or overflow the paint onto that, losing the pre-shading technique I previously worked on. When I move to another panel, I'm going to stop uh, paint flow as I jump over and then address the next panel. This technique is more advanced and it also is a little more time consuming but it gives you the ultimate control in terms of varying your effect of the weathering. If necessary, you can also go back to a previous area that you painted and just modulate it and touch up slightly as needed to even out the overall effect. Okay, so we finished the second of two techniques. Again, on the right-hand side, we did the general coverage method, and on the left-side aircraft, we did the panel by panel. And you can see both techniques for a single color scheme work out to be very similar effects. One of the things that you want to be aware of when you're working with your models is how much contrast to that pre-shade you want to show through. And there are some very easy questions to ask to arrive at an answer, one of which would be, 
does the aircraft take off of grass runways? Does it take off of cement runways? Perhaps the aircraft was hangered frequently, or it was exposed to the elements. These types of questions will help you to gauge how much contrast and how much effect you want in your weathering when you use this technique. Another aspect to look at is contrast itself. What we've gone ahead and done is painted the underside of the aircraft to help explain contrast itself. On the left hand side of the aircraft here, you can see the panel lines very distinctly. While we haven't even applied the base color or the gray color over that, that's still the plastic you're looking at. On the right hand side, you can see that it's all gray. We have basically flooded that area with so much paint that it's drowned out the pre-shading to the point where you can't see it anymore. And it looks rather bland and, and uninteresting. In the middle, you have varying degrees of shading. Now, the artist's trick that will help you to determine the overall coverage is a means of squinting. If you squint your eyes, it cuts away or takes away the linear qualities of the painting and it allows you to see where the contrasts really pop out. On the left hand side, it should be very extreme and on the right hand side, it should be pretty much uniform. And you're generally trying to find something in the middle. Again, right in here, you have a little bit more contrast, but probably within a, an appropriate level. As you move across the wing, you get more subtle effects, some of them a little bit more extreme, but still uh, appropriate. And then as you get back over to this side of the aircraft, you would want to apply more paint to address those areas to even it out. So this technique is good for addressing weathering of the panel lines. In our next video, we're going to talk about post-tinting, which will address sun bleaching effects that can occur on paint.